It's Lucy. I've been at Oxford for two and a half years now, and in that time I've never regretted coming here. And that's because the PhD project I'm doing is just right, it's just what I wanted. I, I study Martian geochemistry, but also because I really like the city. It's, it's small, and there's lots of green spaces, and it suits me well. But I didn't just apply to Oxford, because there's no guarantee of getting in. So when applying for PhDs, it's a good idea to apply to multiple professors at multiple institutions to keep your eggs in multiple baskets. Most people I know went for about three, but I was so scared of getting rejected I went for seven. I wouldn't recommend applying for seven. Seven individually tailored personal statements are not fun for anybody and your referees will never reply to your emails ever again. So you're applying for a fair few and at this point in time you probably don't care which one accepts you so long as there is one, but it is something to bear in mind though. Which university do you want to be at? Which city? Even which country? And there is a lot of practical factors to consider and that's what I want to talk about in this video. First things first, the project you'll be working on or the supervisor you're working with, they have to be just right. This is the most important thing after all, it's why you're doing a PhD so everything else is detail. But all things being equal, there are a fair few factors to consider when choosing a university at postgraduate level. For instance, do you want to go abroad? Five of my applications were in the USA, which all sounds really cool and exciting until you start to think about reality. Am I going to miss my family being so far away? How much is it going to cost me to fly home? And kind of crucially, are there international scholarships that will support me? Also, soon after I applied, I met my boyfriend here in England, and that would have been really miserable if I'd gone across the pond. Something else about moving abroad, do you speak the language? If you don't, are you willing to learn? And if you do, you might have to write in it, teach in it, function in it. Even just in your own country, location needs some thought. On my course, students in Leeds get the same stipend as I do on my same course in Oxford, which is about minimum wage. Bearing in mind the average rent for a one-bed place in Leeds is £150 a week, in Oxford it is £400, and you can see where the north-south divide gets real, real quick. My course gives students in London a slightly higher stipend, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think about 200 quid a term on their oyster, but is that really going to get you far with London prices? Commuting time, quality of accommodation, quality of public transport, quality of green spaces, these are all going to vary from city to city and all are worth your consideration. One big difference between choosing a university at undergraduate level and choosing one at postgraduate level is that ratings really don't matter. I was accepted by two institutions, one in London, one in Oxford, after being systematically rejected by all of America, which is a long story. But whatever my parents were saying about, you can't turn down Oxford, I did have to seriously give both of these some thought. I didn't choose Oxford because of whatever the Times' university critiquing factor said about it last year. I chose to work here because my supervisor works on deep Martian time, back when liquid water was stable on the planet's surface, and the project in London was far more modern Mars-based. I also chose here because the focus was going to be far more geochemistry-based, which is what I wanted to get good at. So please don't let petty ratings affect your choice. Look where the top researchers in your field are and follow the high-quality research, because at this level it's not universities that get world-renowned, it's the individual research groups within them. But research quality aside, you've also got to bear in mind what you value and what makes you happy. You're going to be in this place for three years and that time is not going to be spent solidly working. Ask yourself what you're going to miss about your current city, or what your current city doesn't have that you wish it did, and then figure out what these values are and where you can find them. After being at Oxford for two and a half years, I now know that I miss reasonable rent, don't we all? I miss going for a run and finding hidden countryside instead of sprawling suburbs, but I know that I definitely made the right choice in coming here because I now know just a little bit more about Martian geochemistry, and that's what I came here for. And I definitely made the right choice coming here because the guy I wanted to work with in London shortly left for the other side of the world. Nothing personal, I hope. The most sensible thing to do, of course, is to go and visit universities that you've been accepted by and go and explore. Look for parks that you could see yourself running in. Look at air quality. Look at accommodation prices. Check out how easy it is to get to the department. Emailing current students with your questions is also well worth a shot. Most most people, they're all too happy to help. Just to summarise, number one, is the research group aligned with your interests and very good at what they do? Obviously this is the most important factor, everything else comes second. Number two, can you afford to live in this place comfortably enough for it to not affect your health? And three, can you picture yourself being happy there? For current students watching this, what was the most important factor for you when choosing a university? Have I missed anything critical? Please tell me in the comments or come find me on Twitter. Best of luck to everyone applying to postgraduate universities right now. I started hearing back about this time three years ago, so fingers crossed for you. Thank you for watching, and I really hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, then please do subscribe for more PhD-related shenanigans. Take care until next time.